Today's session is Tips and Tricks in Adobe Express for Education. Uh, to save you time, I think that that's so important for our educators these days, is to try and give you some workarounds um, for you to save you time so you've got more time in the classroom um, with your students. So just before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. I'll just click over to here. Thank you for joining this Wednesday webinar with the ANZ Adobe Education team. Note that we are recording this session, so please mute your microphone. In the spirit of reconciliation, Adobe acknowledges the traditional guardians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Indigenous Australians. To fully engage with this webinar, please do keep your webcams on if you are able. If you would like to workshop along with the presenter, we encourage you to use two screens or two devices, one to view the presentation and the other to access the software. This avoids constantly flicking between windows. If you do miss any content, note that you can always refer back to the recording. Please use the chat feature to ask questions or share comments, and most importantly, make the most of this professional learning opportunity from Adobe. Now it's over to the Adobe education team. Okay, so um, I would like to just pay a special acknowledgement to the Camerol people, um, which lands I am dialing in from today. I had a swim this morning in the ocean and I was reminded of how fortunate I am to be in this beautiful beautiful environment and to be able to um, raise my children here uh, and work and play uh, amongst the lush bushlands and uh, beautiful waterways. So I'd like to uh, extend that acknowledgement to any Torres Strait Islander peoples um, joining today, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander, sorry, people joining today. Uh, let us know where you're dialing in from. Um, I'm just sorry, was a little distracted. I can see that my camera is struggling a little bit, so please let me know if um, how my connection is and I might need to turn my camera off for you. We've got Caitlin Hartley um, joining. Uh, she's my moderator today and um, Caitlin, do you want to come on quickly and say hello? Everyone, welcome to the webinar today. I'm excited to have you here. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Okay, thanks, Caitlin. Um, so I've just got um, a couple of people calling out about the um, not being able to log in. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Caitlin. Yeah, if you can enable the videos and mics for people, that'd be great. So look, I'm Molly Turner. I'm the Creative Campus Lead for TAFE New South Wales. Um, I've been in education for over 17 years. Um, I've worked a lot in the K-12 space before moving into higher education. Um, and today I'm really excited to sort of take everyone through a bit of a test drive of uh, Express for Education. Now, I'm conscious that a lot of people on the call today won't have the Education Express version, um, but don't worry, I've tested out a lot of the tools and features that we are going to be exploring today, uh, and you can find them in your version um, of Express as well. It's just a, a different route that we'll take. Um, so we're going to yeah jump into that space. We'll have a look at some of those uh, resources that are set up for our educators. Um, and the guided activities that are in there. So that's sort of one area that our higher education institutes won't have, but don't worry. Um, Caitlin has found some great resources and we've some curated them together for you. And we've got some links to share where you can be taking sort of templates um, and ideas um, just as sort of the guide activities do as well. Uh, we'll leave some time for some Q&A um, and to go through uh, anything perhaps that uh, you'd like to revisit during the session. So um, let me just click back in here. I'm going to just escape out of this now um, and click over to my Adobe uh, Express for Education. Um, this is the dashboard. So for those K-12 teachers that are here, this is available for all staff and students that work uh, in education in K-12 for free. So it's very exciting for the K-12 space um, and we have a lot of our resources in here are obviously designed for that 
uh, teaching and learning space for both um, educators and also for students. So there are some really cool things um, that you can have a look at. So first of all, I'm just going to call out a couple of things that are quite different. Um, you can see that there are, um, we've got, it's just very educator centric um, and there's different areas where you can sort of click through to say your educator essentials and grab things like rubrics and lesson plans, um, your learning aids there, the, you've got your flashcards and your graphic organisers as well. So what I'll do is I'll take the route that um, if you're joining from a, our other Express version, um, which we call the enterprise version, um, you just need to pop up into your search bar. Okay, so for example, I'm going to just pop in here rubric. Um, so follow along if you like, and I can hit enter there and it's going to give me all these cool templates that I can use here um, and I can edit and I can modify. So I might click into my writing rubric template and I'm going to click to customise that template there. So these rubrics um, offer, there's a really good starting point, like we all use them. Um, we probably have templates as well that we might want to pull in. So you might have done a rubric already, say in Word, which is totally fine. If you save that as a PDF, you can bring it over um, and then you can add some of those design elements um, like changing, the, putting a background colour in for example or um, changing up the font and adding graphics in there just to make it a little bit more engaging uh, and levelling up those rubrics that you've got there. So look, I'll just quickly sort of show you and people I think that are on the call today all know that um, we might change some of the language that we get here rather than a score. We might call it a grade um, and we might be able to, um, and we can edit all those particular ones there. If you all, oh, that one there, I might just lock in place. I always find as well when you get these templates, it's a good idea to lock things like the background down. So I'm just going to right click on there. I'm going to click on lock and it gives me then, um, I can, I can, um, what's that word I'm looking for? I can select a whole lot of areas without sort of selecting that background area. Um, you might find that you just need two or three of those different, um, uh, criteria there and of course you can just sort of delete anything that you don't need um, and you can group things together as well just by selecting it all and clicking on group and what that allows me to do is just be able to bring that down. Oh, I've grabbed the numbers as well. So that's just a nice sort of quick easy way to get your rubrics um, in there for you. So the other things I think that teachers use a lot of, um, which I find really helpful as well, um, is searching for things like a graphic organiser. So again, just up in the search bar, so it doesn't matter what version of Express you're on, you can click in there and you'll see that we've got um, all of the same templates that sit in the education version will be in that other version as well. So um, these are really sort of nice to be able to add into your um, presentations, for example, or your activities that you've got set up for your students. What I might show you here is if I actually click back and I, I have a look at that rubric page, let's just go for that for a second. If I add another page, so rather than just sort of creating all these separate assets, we can come in here and we can actually just sort of add a new page in there. Um, and if I come back into my, oh, I thought it was going to give me my templates here that we can also search for a graphic organiser. And then that can give me some graphic organiser template. Oh, don't think it like that. Sorry, I've been struggling today. I don't know if it's because my husband is streaming the um, the election that's going on at the moment, which is probably distracting a lot of us. Um, so you could just add those as you go along um, into your template. So if I did have that, let's just go back to the graphic organisers. If you did want to have a series of graphic organisers, say your mind map, which is something that you use all the time, and we can pop it into a page there, we can change things as well, 
like the theme. Um, if you wanted to, we can have a look at changing up the colors, for example. Um, so we can modify that depending on, on your class. Uh, and we can sort of save that maybe as our um, graphic organizer template. So we've got that and we can save that. Now what happens then is we can always pull that. So if I go back now to my rubric um, and I've got my other page that I've got here, I can just grab it now from your stuff. So your stuff sort of comes in. Also just add it that way and it's going to ask you to either add it as a page or an image. Uh, select as a page there and what that allows you to do is again be able to modify um, all of the colour schemes or all of the content that's on that particular page there and so then you can start building it into say your presentation that you've pulled in or uh, you might have it next to you might do a mind map before you show them say an infographic on something um, so it's nice to be able to then start to curate these resources it's a resource all in one so we're not what we're not doing is we're creating multiple assets for students to then look at we just put it in all this uh, all in one for you so the way as well that I'd like to then um, get my students to collaborate on this for example so I might have that writing rubric for them um, that we do some peer assessment, for example, or I might have everybody um, jumping in and doing that mind map for me. So if I click on the share button, and this is exactly the same in all of our versions. So if I click on that share button there, I can then um, digitally share this resource with my students uh, and I can get them to come in and edit it when they need. So. Um, loading. I've had this, I've just put on a workshop as well with TAFE New South Wales and it was working quite well um, but it seemed to have, of course now that I'm on a Teams call I think that might be what the issue is because it was running lightning fast before. Um, hopefully yours, yours is already popped up there and you can see you've got all these different sharing capabilities so you can have it linked directly to your Google Classroom for example. So if I click on Google Classroom, uh, if you're signed into Google Classroom, it's going to take that link directly and pop it into uh, your space so you can have a look there. I don't have a Google Classroom account, so I'm not going to do that. Um, now, what you want to do beforehand is you might want to make it a template for your students so they're not going to edit um, your version. They're actually going to uh, have their own sort of template that they can then edit. What's a nice way as well? So a couple of things just in that K to 12 space in particular. Um, so I might just say rubric and mind map. It's a bit of a funny lesson, but let's go with that. Um, and I can save that as I save that template. Um, then it just saves it as a as a share. We call it a remixable template, and then you can pop it into there. Now, obviously, being um, a link as well, you can put it in other LMSs um, and there are some integrations that we have too with other LMSs as well. So if you've got your Canvas um, or your Blackboard or a Moodle and things like that. So um, do a quick Google search there of, um, of LTIs. Yep, so learning management system LTIs and Adobe Express and you can see how it is that you can actually pop your LMS in there too. Um, if I just wanted to email out my students, I can copy that link and I can share it with them just by that link that I've got there and it's copied that over to a clipboard. Um, we will get, now you probably noticed up here in the um, top right hand corner, there's an assign button. Now I just want to make a note, I'm on the um, US version at the moment um, and what that is, is it's, it is what it's sort of saying it is. Um, I can assign particular classes um, that activity um, and it's a really cool way just to be able to stay within Adobe Express and not have to kind of jump in and out of LMSs. It's coming to Australia. Okay, so just keep popping back in there if you've got the K-12 version. Um, hopefully any day now um, we'll, we'll be sure to make an announcement for you.
So look, that's just a really quick way to have a look at some of those um, templates to save you time. So you're not sort of going in and starting from scratch to make particularly those mind maps, um, graphic organizers and things like that. So um, scrolling, if I keep scrolling down here, you'll also notice that in the um, K to 12, they've got different lesson ideas that you've got here um, around the templates. Now, it doesn't happen often, um, but what I can see is it's just gone into, that section's gone into a bit of a maintenance mode, which means that they're going in and putting in more resources sort of as we speak. Um, so what I'll show you we can do is actually be able to um, have a look at some of those classroom resources that are sitting in there. And the way that I do that is once I go back home, I can just test out, um, I can just use that search bar okay so for example if I wanted to do something on a oh it's giving me grief there we go if I wanted to search something for exact you can see that I've already done this today fractions and decimals so I can look through and have a look at some of the cool templates we've got with fractions and decimals um, persuasive writing techniques is another really cool one that I found um, and rather than wait for my screen to load, um, I have already done those two. So I'll quickly have a look here at our, um, our decimals and fractions. Uh, and they're really funky. I like this because basically, um, uh, basically, sorry, I was just having a quick look at the, the chat, but um, I think I just trust that Caitlin will um, be able to answer those questions in a minute. Um, so with these, again, they're, they're really fun and funky and I think that, you know, students these days are really, you know, we're kind of moved beyond those black line masters, those PDFs that can kind of appear a bit two dimensional and we're adding splashes of colour, we're making it a little bit more engaging as well. So they give us some nice templates to be able to to work with. Um, now you might want to change your descriptions that you've got in here or change any of the images and obviously everything that's on here is editable as well. Um, I wonder if I, I oh know I hadn't put it in there. So the reason why I duplicated and I'll just go back and show you as well. So I can, if I wanted to have my first page is that um, instructions, yeah, so the instructions for the activity or I've just got the information around what fractions and decimals and percentages are, I can then also duplicate that page just by clicking on those three buttons. Uh, and then I can use the same um, template or the same graphics if you like. Um, and then just I just go through and I just delete stuff. So I, I would just do a big, oh, it's really struggling today. Um, go through and delete it and then you can be able to, you can even do it over here where your layers are, okay? So you can select on those layers and be able to just click on your delete button and that just gives you that. Uh, I might just want to keep the um, the borders perhaps in that background in there. So you can go through and do that too. Um, the other one I'd like to show you because it did come up really nicely. I thought I had actually saved one of them uh, is the persuasive writing. So the persuasive writing, I'll pop in lesson. Um, it gives some really great instructions and lots of infographics around sort of um, those templating for like power for persuasive paragraphs, for example, um, or using, um, you know, certain techniques. So this is a really cool infographic that you've got sort of there in terms of the, the power up brainstorming activity that you've got. Um, and because I've popped that that little tag at the bottom there, uh, at the end, sorry, saying lesson, um, it's going to give me ones that have been used before or perhaps we've sort of worked on um, and, and popped in there for you. Now, again, you should be able to find these templates as well um, in both versions of Adobe Express. Okay, so um, what I will do now is just uh, going to have a quick look at uh, one of the lessons here um, on the water cycle. 
Um, and that's actually raised a good point. Um, oh, that's where it is. I've been playing in all the versions today. Um, the water cycle is a really good one too. So that sort of sits under our science as well. And, and they've got some really cool infographics as well that you can um, edit as you go. So what I have just done, I wonder if it's in here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me just escape out of that. Um, what I was interested in is sort of looking at ways to really save you a lot of time as well when it comes to that that lesson planning and those um, what you can do with the templates that you get. Okay, so for example, this um, water cycle one. I'm going to start from the beginning, okay, of my workflow that I did for this, okay, because I thought, look, I haven't been in the classroom for a little while now, but if I was, how would I um, start my lesson planning and what are the sorts of resources that I'd be able to draw down on? I'm certainly not someone that starts from scratch. I like to have a look at different templates and I looked at ChatGPT. Yep. So a few of you might be looking at ChatGPT just to be able to give you some guidance. Obviously, we don't use it to do all our work, but it really gives us this nice sort of template. And I was like exploring these GPTs here. So um, you can add Adobe Express GPT into your ChatGPT account, okay? And you just go and you do a search and do Adobe Express and it links it really nicely. Now, I think it's the, I've I don't have the paid version, uh, and I believe the paid version is even better than what I get. Um, but it still gave me this pretty cool um, workflow, which I think would just would have saved me hours and hours of time, right? So I've come in and I've asked it. I didn't even ask it to link it and align it to the Australian curriculum, for example, but I could do that and it would do that for me. And I could even ask it in a minute. But it gives me this sort of nice lesson plan. Now we have lesson plan templates uh, in Adobe Express in all versions um, and you can grab those and obviously modify those and be able to sort of put your um, information down into it. But I thought, okay, let me see. What have you got for me, ChatGPT? Uh, it gave me a pretty good lesson. A science is not my area. I'm an English and French teacher, uh, but I sort of had a look and it does suggest some activities that the students could do as well um, in terms of using Adobe Express and it says have students create a visual story of the water cycle stages using Express they, they can design each stage as part of a water cycle poster. I'm like, okay well where's where is it I want that template um, so I asked it to create that template in Adobe Express for me um, and it came up with some pretty cool um, examples there. I was like well how well, I'm going to test this a little bit further. So I asked it to do more of an interactive presentation. Um, lo and behold, it didn't do it for me. So I hope I can't wait for the day that that that's going to happen. Um, but it did give me some pretty cool sort of templates. Again, a, another series of that. So I clicked through on that and I added that as my sort of title page. What happened as well, as soon as I put it in here, Adobe Express recognized that I'm doing water cycle and it gave me all the templates that I might want to then add to this particular presentation. So I added the forms of water. Yep. So that was a pretty cool infographic and I'll just go back and I'll sort of show you. So if I click on that there, I can either start it as a new file or add as pages. So I click through and I add it as pages. Now it's pretty fun. It's giving me the water cycle. I like the design. It's it's got a good background. Obviously, I'll be sharing this digitally. I don't want to go and print all of these out for my students, given all of the colours on it. Um, but we live in a digital world now. So again, I can share it with my students just to be able to have a look at it. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. And then I thought, you know what? Students really love animation and they really enjoy when things are a bit dynamic on the page. They're constantly sort of looking at videos. We know that that um, is a really big part of their world. So rather than just having a bunch of information, and I thought about, you know, my students it would be, um, 
you know, in those circumstances where like a lot of information on a page is just so overwhelming and they have no idea sort of where to start. So I was like, okay, well, how can I animate this particular resource? Okay. So what I ended up doing was um, when it came in, it came in obviously as a full, um, let me go back to it, sorry show you the full one so the full version that's my little test bed the full version of it here okay um, and what I started to do is I duplicated that so I can take elements from that page and put it onto my animated page I hope I'm not losing anyone here um, but I'll show you this the, the step through that we've got okay now what I might do I oh, actually will keep we're going to delete this page here okay so I've started here and I selected the area that I wanted to animate and automatically it sort of pops up on this animation and I clicked through on that there and I asked it to drift in. Now there's lots of settings, you can have it drifting in uh, energetically, we might change that to like a smooth one there and you can, and you can also play around with the duration of it too. Um, so if you have a look, it comes in, oh, it's a bit too smooth. And then what I did was I dropped in the other information. And sorry, my, um, I can see I've got a massive lag. So apologies again for my internet. Um, so what I did was when I got to this one here, I was able just to duplicate that scene. Okay, because that's got my first animation on it there. And I'm going to duplicate that. Okay. So uh, I think I feel like I've lost my other one. Anyway, you can get the gist of it. So I've popped in the other um, bit of information. And now if I go back to my workable page, I can then grab and I'll show you what I did. Oh, it's really struggling. Sorry, everyone. Um, I can copy, and I don't want to copy and paste all of it. I can copy and paste that. So I just select it and control copy, which is what we do. Um, and I can paste it back onto my new page here. So if I hit duplicate from there, it's going to give me all of those elements that were already on that page. Just wait for it to load. Um, and I want to be able to drop in my final bit in there. Yep. So once I've selected that, click on animation and I just grab the same one. So we had it sort of drifting in there. And you can see, now if I go back to the beginning, um, that it has it all. So then that's more of that interactive kind of um, presentation, if you like, or information coming in from the students that they might then have a read through. Now, obviously there's a quite a bit of text on there. I'd want to set that, that duration. So they read everything about the solid before the liquid comes in. So look, I know that that was quite a rushed version, um, but I just thought I'd show you really quickly because it's for those that are quite um, avid users of it, just know that anything of those templates that we get, you've got that opportunity then to sort of level that up and um, by making these multimodal or animated uh, resources for your students and yourself. Um, cool. Okay, so back to our education version here. Any other questions that are coming through? I think Caitlin's all over it, so that's pretty good. Um, so if I go back as well, just check out, if you're interested in that make a video, there are some templates there that you can get started. So you can start to know the tools and the features of it. Um, and we're, we're always improving that experience um, and they've just sort of add uh, they've added things like um, you know smooth transitions and audio transitions as well in there so there's some 
really cool features like students and being able to put their voice over. Um, you know, they might find a template that they like to use, but, you know, we don't want them just to get in all the information from Express that they then have to read out and record their voice over. So then we know that that information is actually, um, you know, going in and that they can, they're, they've been a part of it and they're not just, they're not just, um, yeah, using other people's work, if you like. Um, so the thing that I will just show now, and this, um, these are great, and we hope that the higher ed, we can start integrating these as well, are these guided activities. Um, they're really impressive. And I was thinking about how I would use them in my classroom. So the guided activities that we've got now, for those that are in higher ed, um, just bear with me, I will send you some, um, I'll go through the links um, to some resources where you get something sort of similar. It's not set up as much um, in your version, but these are really cool. Now I thought about like the context of how I would use these guided activities and obviously great learning for me. I can go in and look at these guided activities and I can learn about this one here is design and animate a unique generative AI creature. And it gives me this really cool template. What you can see on the side here is this little guide as well. So I'll just sort of quickly play. In this project, you will use generative AI to create a fun and silly animated creature. Then record their introduction to the world. You will learn to change. So it goes through and it does step by step and it'll say step one, step two, and it'll show you exactly what to do. Now I thought, okay, that's a really great learning tool for me and it's a great way for me to sort of, you know, rather than trying to recreate, you know, create this particular activity myself and make this particular template, um, I can just borrow this these templates. Now I might want to do the guided activity with my students myself, but I thought, look, for my students, I'd probably use this in an example of say flipped learning. So I'd get students to look at these videos so they're available for them as well. Um, so they could look at these guided activities and they could, um, you know, I would say for everybody, I could share that particular one with them. And so we're going to look at this. This is what we're going to do tomorrow. Why don't you have a play before we come into class and have a think about what your um, what your character is going to be and you can um, show us and we're going to do that in class. So a nice example of flipped learning there. The other thing I thought of is it could be a really cool activity for an extension activity, right? So we have students that often might do their presentation um, and they've done their presentation, they do it sort of really quickly and you're running around trying to support the students sort of in that lesson um, in getting their activity up. So what you could do as well is you could go through these um, guided activities and you might find one, for example, like on um, like video making, for example. Um, uh, like create a video with a vintage feel. And this could be a really cool way again just to level up those uh, and extend those students in saying well that was a really cool presentation you did on the water cycle. Um, how about you make a video that has this vintage feel now? Go and watch the guided activity and then try and sort of recreate your presentation um, using that template. So that they'll be able to sort of take that and run with it. I know actually just last week my son did, uh, was doing a PowerPoint presentation on, on um, endangered species and he was, the PowerPoint presentation was great and it's really good but I wanted to sort of see if he could add uh, a video in there and you know grab something like we've got these things called um, animate character and he was able to then take the hairy nose wombat and animate it and the hairy nose wombat was then his little um, co-host for his presentation. So it's just some, you know, other ideas in terms of thinking outside of the box um, of what students are capable of doing now. And he really took it and run, ran with it. I sort of showed him a couple of things um, and what he produced was, was quite impressive. So it's always really nice to see what the students um, do and get out of it. So please check that out if you're in uh, K to 12. 
for our higher ed, because I don't want to um, yeah, lose anyone here on the call today. What we, uh, Caitlin was fantastic in going through our edX pages. So that's our Adobe, um, so edX.adobe.com. And this is where we have all of our um, resources that sort of sit in here for our educators. So if you haven't found that already, um, we can see as well. Thank you, Caitlin's already there. She's um, already popped it in there for a link that you've got. And these are great templates as well that you can um, use. And so this one here, perhaps like the Creative Challenge AI Alter Ego, we actually did this at our conference, which there's the teachers really love doing, it will guide you through um, and it gives you that little tutorial. So whilst you won't have the guided activity sitting in your Adobe Express, don't worry, you've got um, the templates and little tutorials that you can draw down on and you can have a look at here. So there's that uh, link in the chat that we've got. Um, so just to wrap it up, we've just sort of got a few more minutes to go. I'll just go back to um, my presentation here and I'm going to just point to a couple more resources that we've got in here uh, for everybody to look at. Um, just to extend on this learning today. So. The creative uh, challenge templates definitely sort of check them out. In fact, um, keep an ear out. We're hoping to run a creative challenge um, competition for the end of year. We'll sort of, uh, yeah, be able to share that information with you soon, perhaps at the next Wednesday webinar. Um, so we've got the creative challenge templates that are in there. I'll just click on present uh, so I can click through. Uh, the Higher Education Hub as well is another space for higher ed uh, educators to definitely have a look at. So I think that more and more we got come in here, Caitlin, we sort of find um, these great courses. So you can do anything sort of from those one hour self-paced courses where you get um, badging or going through and having a look at and finding that little RL Express icon in there and having a look at all the different um, uh, tutorials or PD, if you like, um, around Adobe Express. So have a look there. Uh, Cultivating Career Boosting Skills has been a really popular series um, and we've got all of these uh, webinars that are also available. So obviously not just for higher ed edu educators, K-12, jump in there as well if you're interested to sort of see, but the content is geared towards higher ed. Um, Whilst the timings might not be so sympathetic to our time zones, if you sign up, you will get uh, recordings of those, okay? And um, for the teachers, we do have our K-12 sort of offerings as well. So again, there's some really good, interesting ideas uh, curated by our education team globally. Um, you can have a look again at those self-paced courses. Um, and also receive badgings for those and have a look at your even your PD toolkit. So you might be tasked with um, supporting your teachers in your space with using um, technology or Adobe Express, for example. Uh, so there's some really cool resources that you can draw down on uh, to support those teachers. Now, there are some quick wins where Wednesdays here uh, from our global team, but we have our own Wednesday webinar series, which obviously you're a part of today. And so make sure that you're always sort of ch checking back to have a look in there. Um, and a good place to do that is our new K-12 uh, site. So don't worry, higher ed, you are launching um, probably next week. You will have a section here for higher ed. Um, but for those teachers, please click through on to the PL events and they'll be the same for, um, for each of the uh, different uh, sections of education there. So uh, you can check out sort of what our Wednesday webinars, what we've got next week, our uh, educators conference. Now, if you were a part of it, thank you for being a part of it. And if you want to come back through and sort of have a look at some of that content, or maybe you attended Sydney and you wanted to check out Melbourne, uh, you can click through on those different links there and have a look at some of the recordings. 
Um, we've got our Adobe Document and Cloud Enablement events as well, which we know are really super useful for anyone um, that is doing um, their newsletters, for example. So you might be tasked with that in your school to do newsletters um, or to do your promotions and templates and things like that. So um, they're actually really, really helpful. And again, you can, there'll be some ANZ specific webinars there and there'll be some global ones as well. Um, and just lastly, I'll sort of give a plug for our community. So we've got our Adobe Creative Educators and the community is growing, um, oh golly, I think every couple of months or even every month, uh, Dr. Tim Kitchen is really uh, busy skilling up the next um, generation of Adobe Creative Educators. So if it's something that you'd like to be part of, it's an amazing community, you can check out um, the links there at, on the that site to be able to become uh, an Adobe Creative Educator and you can register your interest here for anything that's happening locally. So I know that uh, Dr Kitchen has a couple more coming up uh, for the end of the year to have a look there. All right, we, we might wrap it up a little bit earlier. Oh, last one I'll just say for you is the Creative Skills Series. So look, what we have found is um, our educators are really uh, looking at <clears throat> this series that was it was designed with students in mind, um, but there are some really fantastic courses in here. Uh, I think for everybody, um, I haven't had the chance to go through them all, but I'm certainly learning a lot um, by having a look. Uh, they're very easy to digest. Uh, you get a badge for it too. Which which is really cool. So you can add that to your LinkedIn or on your CVs and things like that. If you are in higher ed, please promote that to your students as well. Uh, it's a really nice way for them to demonstrate additional learning. So not just doing their coursework, but going above and beyond to uh, really foster their creative and digital skills. Uh, so the link is in there too. Thank you so much, Caitlin. All right, lastly, we'll just get everybody to hold on the line. Oh, there you go. I'm just plugging some more resources. Um, and please, feedback is really a gift for us. Um, so please pop in your feedback where the QR code will pop up in a minute and then we'll wrap up. Thank you for being part of this Wednesday webinar from the ANZ Adobe Education team. We hope you found it helpful. While you complete the feedback form via this QR code or link, note that Wednesday webinars are one of a number of free events and resources that we have for teachers as well as for students. Adobe.ly slash edu events dash ANZ is a link you should look up regularly, bookmark and share with your colleagues to find out what we have available. Thanks again for being involved in this webinar. We look forward to seeing you at the next event. Keep being creative.